I am going to do a Meg Ryan fall inspired reading vlog. I'm gonna spend this coming week just fully going for it. Meg Ryan movies, Nora Ephron, Meg Ryan movies specifically are some of my favorite movies of all time. I love the way they look. I love the way they probably smell like newly sharpened pencils. I love the way everyone talks. I love the outfits. I love the autumnal vibes. Sleeps in Seattle. When Harry met Sally, you've got mail. And because the TikTok girlies have really been on the Meg Ryan Fall vibe, I felt super inspired to turn this into a booktube video that I'm sure someone else will do much better than me. For the next few days, I'm going to dress like my girl Meg Ryan. I'm going to read books that make me think of those movies, both in the tropes and in the autumnal vibes and I might watch a movie or two. I don't know how like aesthetic this video will be because I do live in South Carolina and while it is under 80 degrees this week, it's still, you know, warm, you know what I mean? I've also decided to film this on my phone because I want a break from my camera. It's a lot of work to use that camera. I love it, but I never fully learned how to use it. So it's every day is a trial and error with it. This I feel like will be more relaxed, a little more quirky curly. You know, think about Meg Ryan, she's a quirky gal. And this is what we're gonna do. It's gonna be casual, it's gonna be fun. Grab a cup of tea, grab a cup of coffee, get in your best sweater and high-waisted jeans. Let's get into it. Probably the next clip that you're gonna see from me is tomorrow in my Meg Ryan fall outfit for day one. This is my look. You can see it right here, a full body shot. I wanted to do a Sally Albright from When Harry Met Sally inspired moment, a little business casual, even though it's Sunday. A little something that is heavily layered. We have the tweed pants. The tweed pants that are weirdly shaped, but swish beautifully. We also have the sweater, the dad sort of sweater moment and this just little button down. I think I'm gonna end up taking this off pretty much immediately because while it's under 80 degrees in South Carolina, it's like 79. I started reading a Friends to Lovers because When Harry Met Sally, very notably, is the goat of Friends to Lovers stories, if you will. I started reading one that I hadn't read before, obviously, Wedding Party by Jasmine Guillory. I got this from my library via audiobook, and it's so far pretty good. It's about two people who have a mutual friend who is actually the lead of the first book, The Wedding Date, and they don't really come across great to each other. They don't have like a good start to their friendship. And when the book starts, it's been a few years and they're at a birthday party for the male lead and they end up having kind of a nice night and they end up hooking up. But of course they have kind of a weird relationship of, you know, having to be around each other, but not necessarily getting along super great. So they just sort of ignore it, you know, push it under the bed. So I think this is gonna be quite slow burn. I'm hoping it's slow burn. That is what I want for my friends to lovers stories, but we shall see. I'm really tired. I'm having dessert for breakfast. I'm eating a chocolate chip muffin. I do eat muffins with a spoon and a bowl. I scoop it like ice cream. You might be asking why. Well, I'm quirky. No, um, I hate mess. So I am like 25% into the wedding party. I'm getting a little cry. Jasmine Guillory books are good, but they never like absolutely demolish me. Does that make sense? Like I like them, I enjoy them. But for example, like this one, I'm not feeling the tension that I want to feel. Like there is tension, but it's not as potent as I would like. I do like the fact that The Wedding Date, which is my still my favorite Jasmine Guillory book that I have read, that storyline intersects with this one and the second book, The Proposal, which I DNF'd, um, also intersects. I enjoy that kind of world building. So I'm gonna just like bore my way through The Wedding Date and update y'all when I'm finished. I need a nap. I finished The Wedding Party by Jasmine Guillory. Did I listen to this book on triple speed? Yes. You might be asking why? Well, I think that if an audiobook narrator is able to be understandable, legible, if you will, on triple speed, 
and I'm still getting the emotional weight of what's happening. I'm still understanding the dialogue and the plot just as well as if I had listened to it on a painstakingly 1x speed, then that is, I should be able to do that. I really liked this book. I didn't think I was going to like it as much as I ended up liking it. The last half of this book was really good. This is when Harry met Sally and the fact that they are kind of two opposite people. They don't hate each other, but they don't really get along well. They're sort of forced to be around each other because they're in their friend's wedding. And they end up, you know, having a physical attraction and it grows to be like, you know, an emotional attraction. So it's a slow burn emotionally, which I did like. This book had some like higher stakes than maybe a Meg Ryan fall movie moment would because like the guy gets concussed. Is it fallish? No, but I didn't pick it for that. I picked it for the fact that it had When Harry Met Sally vibes, which I do think it does, especially at the beginning when they're sort of sparring with each other. I was thinking of this scene in particular, except for I think that our characters are a little gender flipped. Our main lady character is more like careless, like Harry, and our main male character is more uptight, like Sally. And I thought it was really interesting and funny to make that parallel. I'm now going to change into some outside clothes and sit on my balcony and read, and I will let you know what I'm going to read. I think I'm going to pick something really autumnal. This wine tastes so bad. It tastes like yeast. Y'all, I'm so tired. I've not been sleeping super well. There's a certain point in the day where I feel my eyes going bloodshot. <laughs> I put on this little like corduroy shirt thing because I wanted something that looked autumnal but was like comfortable for being outside. And now I'm like, I'm gonna go take a bath. I might read a little bit in the bath. I might just end up scrolling on TikTok. the end of your mug collection and you're just drinking out of a Inside Out Disgust mug. I love Inside Out, so it's no problem, but hello, welcome. I slept good last night for me, which we love. Today I am rocking a Kathleen Kelly You've Got Mail moment. There's this amazing outfit she wears in You've Got Mail that I've loved since I was a child. I was inspired by that, this all black moment. I have just this top that used to be a dress but shrunk and then this black skirt and tights. I haven't worn tights since like March, so it was very exciting to bring the tights out. And then these really chunky platform Oxfords, which I love. I did start reading something last night, but I'm gonna talk about that in a minute, a little bit later. Do you guys wanna see some of my Halloween decor that I have over here? Should I give you a little tour of my little bit of Halloween decor? I'm gonna get some more. Oh, I'm so rhymey today. Well, let me show you what I have. So over here we have this card that I found somewhere and I think it's really cute and I put it up. And then we have this fall scene I got from a thrift store that's up all the time. This is a soap dispenser, love him. Uh, these little pumpkins from the dollar section at Target. This is also from Target. Target has like such good Halloween decorations. It's so lovely. And then these garlands, which are from Home Goods. And then this guy also from Target. And then another crow, also from Target. And then this guy right here, also from Target. My bagel's done. I love this. I love theme parks, and I just thought this was really dumb and cute. Let's make my bagel and talk about what I'm reading. So what am I currently reading? I wanted to read something really autumnal since we went with like a tropey thing yesterday. And I started last night, meaning I read the first five pages of The Cafe Between Pumpkin and Vine which is the third book in this sort of anthology series about this town called Moonbright, Maine. And it's a Halloween town. It's not a Halloween town in like the Halloween town sense, but magical things happen there specifically with love and spells and they're really into Halloween. This series is so much fun and perfect if you like Hallmarky things, but Hallmarky things with a little bit more spice to them. And I'll probably start another audiobook as well. I think I want to start another tropey audiobook. Sounds bad. Tropey audiobook, but I haven't made up my mind. So I'll let y'all know. I picked another audiobook. I picked up Spoiler Alert. I haven't actually started it, but I'm excited. This apparently has You've Got Mail vibes, and since I'm in a You've Got Mail outfit, it felt fitting. I neglected to film an intro here, but my mom and I got dinner. Roll clip.
As Meg Ryan would do, we're eating McDonald's. <laughs> That's a Meg Ryan fall moment, isn't it, Mom? Sure, yes, it is. <laughs> Should I have gotten like a baguette to be more on theme? Or some, I don't know, bespoke pasta? Probably, but the McDonald's was very good. We also did a little bit of shopping. I'm gonna quickly go through what I got. Wax melts. Pumpkin spice flavored. LOL, but it smells so good. Raccoon plate. Pumpkin buddy. Cab sab because it is fall red wine season. And fully spooky wine. I have reading updates. I am now 50% into no spoilers by Olivia Dade. It's called spoiler alert, Emma. I realize I haven't explained what this book is about. Basically what we're looking at without spoiling anything is we have two characters who write fan fiction for a Game of Thrones like TV show and they have like a really deep anonymous online friendship. But <laughs> the jinx is the guy is the main actor or like one of the main actors on the Game of Thrones TV show. He does this to like let off steam. Basically through the power of social media unbeknownst to both of them they end up going on a date with each other. And he realizes pretty quickly that the woman that he's on a date with is his fanfiction writing partner. And at this point in the novel, she does not realize that he is her fanfiction writing partner. You got the you got mail, right? That's very you've got maily. Few notable things. One, the characters are a bit older. They're in their 30s as opposed to their 20s, which I am enjoying. Another point is our main male character has this sort of like himbo golden retriever persona. It's a defense mechanism, which I think is going to be really interesting to see how that like plays out. Notable part of this book is this book tackles or has conversations about specifically fat phobia in fandom. Our main lady character is a fat woman. She spends a part of this novel talking about her experiences as a fat woman in fandom. I overall think this book is super good. It has great chemistry and interesting needed conversations that aren't often ignored in the romance genre. I also ha read, <laughs> I can't even get this out, I also read the first story in The Cafe Between Pumpkin and Vine. I'm not quite ready to talk about that one yet. I think I'm gonna read the other stories and I'm gonna give you a pretty little wrap up of that book. I now though am going to get rid of this, enjoy my Paddington, sweater. Kathleen Kelly sold children's books, so I think she'd approve. And I am going to just go to bed. Welcome to day three. This Meg Ryan fit is inspired by just general Meg Ryan-ness. Not a particular outfit, just the vibes, you know. This thrifted green olive trench coat like dress coat dress and these cute little shoes little tiny little like loafer heels that i'm obsessed with that i also thrifted recently so that is the look now i have to run an errand during my lunch break i have to pick up some packages at my parents house and i'm gonna bring them a little treat i'm gonna go to starbucks anytime i go to starbucks i think about the scene and you've got mail where she's talking about starbucks orders can for only 2.95 get not just a cup of coffee, but an absolutely defining sense of self. And as someone who worked at Starbucks, I see that scene and I'm like, that's not the cuteness that was occurring ever. But I do love it. I love the romanticization of Starbucks. I visited with my father, gave him his pumpkin spice latte, as seen here. Ooh. Spicy. <laughs> and then he gave me pumpkin cookies. They are some famous Jennifer your mother follows on Instagram. Not Jennifer Aniston, but the other one. Garner. Yeah, yeah, her. Only celebrity your mother follows. Anyway, so I said, I got this leftover pumpkin. And she said, oh, look, this Jennifer lady just put up a recipe. Her and her mother were making pumpkin spice pumpkin cookies. So they're brown butter pumpkin oatmeal cookies. So I think I'm gonna eat those maybe later tonight. I'm getting anxiety about our dude having to tell her that not that, 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 that he's her fan fiction writing partner. They make it look so easy and you've got mail. Like she accepts it. She's like, I hoped, 
I hoped it would be you. I wanted it to be you. And you're like, really? This guy's actually nice. You know, he's not trying to destroy her family's legacy, so. I finished. No spoilers. Spoiler alert. I really liked it. It was really cute. I talked about already sort of the major things that make this book, I think, different and interesting. But further into the book, when we hit that conflict where our protagonist, April, finds out her boyfriend, Marcus, famous actor, is the same man that she's had a friendship online with for two years, was handled very well. Something that I liked about this book, and I think in part it's because these characters are a bit older, they communicated through that, I think, in a really interesting way. We saw them like fighting throughout this book, and I don't think we always get that. We tend to get like one big fight that like breaks them up in a rom-com and brings them back together. In this book, they're fighting throughout the book. They're fighting because of their own issues, their own baggage, and this sort of like last straw, big third act moment is building off of that, like trust, mistrust, trust, mistrust, building that relationship slowly as adults. And when we hit that moment, while it feels really painful, you understand both characters and you kind of understand why they have done the things they have done. They also both take ownership for how they acted and how they reacted to the situation and I think a really vulnerable and nuanced way. So there you go. I'm gonna take my makeup off. I'm gonna talk about how I finished the cottage betwixt between in and around pumpkin situated next to vine cafe edition because I finished it. What is there to say? So as I previously mentioned before, this is a third book in this sort of anthology series set in this town of Moonbright, Maine that really loves Halloween. The first book centers around an inn that has like love magical properties around Halloween. The second book is a bake shop, similar deal. And then this book centers around a cafe, except for instead of magical cookies or a witchy patron, this whole thing is about this town prophecy legacy of women chanting this thing on Halloween in order to see what their future husband would look like. Not partner, not love, husband. So already I was like, weaker, weaker concept. But let me tell ya, this was sort of disappointing. I have found what I like most about these stories, at least the first two, was the sense of community and coziness and how like surprisingly good the romance was with how fast the timelines were. Like I got into it and we had friends to lovers, hate to love, second chance. It just, it worked pretty well for the most part and I was into the romance. Here, while the cozy vibes were there, while I really enjoyed all of the talk of food and specifically breakfast food, the romance was not giving what it needed to give. <laughs> well, let me start off with the story I did really like. The second story in this book, I enjoyed. It was cute. It was like a second chance romance. I liked the pacing. I felt like their relationship made sense. They had known each other before. So the fact it moved quickly didn't bother me too much. There's a lot of mutual respect, a little hate to love sparring. It was really sweet and enjoyable and I liked it. I even got a little choked up by the end, which is how you know I have been bamboozled. I have been Pisces rising. Now the third story was okay. It wasn't like particularly horrible. The writing was perfectly fine, but it just moved so quickly. Like this was an unrequited crush romance that got very confusing involving twin brothers. And the girl in this book thought that she had a crush on one of the brothers because she had kissed him in high school, but in reality she had kissed the other brother and he had had a long-term crush on her. It was a mess. Now the first story, the first story was bad. What we had here were caricatures. The main lady character was like meek, but sweet and always got everybody's orders wrong at the cafe and was inexperienced according to the male 
protagonist. So we had that. She guffawed a lot. Like she was very quirky, not like other girls getting very Bella from Twilight. And then our main guy character was into motorcycles, which is fine, but he wore not only a motorcycle jacket, motorcycle shoes, and a bandana. Their relationship also was just so quick. Like they didn't really know each other before super well. He actually had dated her older sister briefly and they start talking on Halloween and then three days later they're engaged basically is the timeline. So it just felt hilariously ridiculous. Overall, it just, it wasn't right what I wanted it to be. For a Meg Ryan nor Efron video, you want the romance to be strong. And I thought like, oh, these three like autumnal fall romance stories that have been really enjoyable romantically in previous installments would be better. And they weren't. But that is a wrap on day three. I'm gonna go. Welcome to another day. It's Wednesday, day four. What am I wearing? I'm doing a casual Sally Albright moment. I have on white button up. I've got on very high waisted black slacks, black loafers. Simple, comfortable. I wanted to do a little bit of professionalism, but keep it comfy and movable because today is a moving day. Not really. I don't know what I'm talking about. Last night, I started another audiobook because it was really short. It was on the script. It's called Pumpkin Everything. Did I want to get the cottage between betwixt here and there and everywhere pumpkin and vine cafe edition out of my head? Yes. So did I pick another cozy Halloween town romance? I did. This one's set in Autumnsboro, New Hampshire. It's about a woman who comes back to take care of her grandfather and guess who's there? Her high school sweetheart. One of the things about this book that I think it makes it really funny is our main character is a self-published horror novelist and she's pretty successful. And she bases a lot of her characters on people from her town and they're not like the nicest portrayals. So everyone's mad at her in the town when they start reading her books while she's there, which I find really funny. I finished Pumpkin Everything. It was fine. It was cute. It was fallish. It gave me the fall vibes. What I liked most about this book was that romance wasn't actually the most important thing about it. I know, shocking. It really was about this woman's self-discovery and realization that she'd been holding on to a lot of guilt for leaving her hometown. That was kind of interesting. She was also a super annoying, stubborn character, which was also interesting. But while reading this, I realized that I need a break from contemporary romance and maybe romance in general for the rest of this week. I gotta step back. I gotta take a little break. And instead of reading more books that follow the tropes of When Harry Met Sally and You've Got Mail, which you've already accomplished by reading The Wedding Party and spoiler alert, or reading more autumnal books because I've already read two, I'm gonna read books that more remind me of the characters or remind me of Nora Ephron's writing style. I don't know if I'm gonna get to all of them, but I will try. First book that I would like to read is Meaty by Samantha Irby. I love Samantha Irby's writing. This is the only one of Samantha Irby's books I have not read, but I chose this because Nora Ephron was very famous for writing books of essays. I could have read one of those books, but I didn't want to be too on the nose. Next, I chose The Reading List by Sarah Nisha Adams because I think Kathleen Kelly specifically would love this book. I chose this because this is a book about family. You've Got Mail at its central like heart is about a mother and a daughter and the legacy the mother has left for her daughter, in my opinion. And this is about a grandfather connecting with his granddaughter through literature. And the other book, which tonally is very different, is A Special Place for Women. I chose A Special Place for Women because it's about girl bossing in New York City and about this sort of like secret society, sort of cult-like thing. I chose this because I was thinking about Sally Albright and how Sally Albright was a journalist and this just felt like something that Sally Albright would like write about, like she cracked this case, you know, or she'd be invited to join. Sally Albright is a little bit of a girl boss. So that is my plan. That is what I plan on reading. <sighs> it is very much raining very much right now. Woo! Wow! A little bit into special place for women. 
And like I mentioned, I picked this because Sally Albright is a journalist and the main character in this book is a journalist. I didn't actually say that before. And I particularly was thinking about the scene in When Harry Met Sally where they're on a double date and they're talking about writing in New York City. Amazing, don't you think it's amazing? And you wrote it? I also wrote Pastor's Quiche of the 80s. Get over yourself. I did. Where did I read that? New York Magazine. Sally writes for New York Magazine. You know, that piece had a real impact on me. I mean, and it's funny because I get similar vibes here with how the main character is talking about writing. So, yeah, maybe not When Harry Met Sally in the fact this isn't a romance. Uh, when Harry Met Sally in that New York City elite setting. So far, this is the only book I've read that actually has a Meg Ryan reference. A pretend boyfriend? Uh-oh, straight out of a romantic comedy. Right, I said, I'm a real Meg Ryan. Also, set in late September, so actually fall time. I'm at my parents' house. I finished a special place for women. I have complicated feelings. This is a book about a secret society that is all about empowering women and a journalist who is down on her luck professionally and personally, and she decides to infiltrate this secret society now this book tries its best to critique and in some ways satirize white feminism, girl bossification, if you will. And I think when we first see our main character, Jillian, enter into the secret society, you see that happening. You see it through her skeptical lens, which I enjoyed. I thought it was kind of funny. I thought it was really tongue in cheek while also being a little bit cutting. But the problem with this book is that the last part of it, the ending, sort of cuts it down. And instead of it being sort of a brutal, thriller-ish, intense, truly cutting critique of white feminism, elitism, and economic privilege, it becomes sort of optimistic and sort of makes these villainous characters into relatable people. While I think it's important to have complicated women characters, but I do think that the ending watered down the message. It made this book go, oh, white feminism, yeah, it's bad, but they're just trying to do their best. So I didn't love that. But overall, it was super, super entertaining. I tore through it. It was really fast paced. I read it in a day. I don't read physical books in a day, like ever. And I also really enjoyed the romance. We actually kind of had a When Harry Met Sally romance in this book. I really liked her love interest. He was really adorable. Overall, do I think Sally Albright would like this book? I do. There you go. I'm gonna sleep in my childhood bed and I'm gonna sleep so well. Today's look is casual, Sally Albright. Look at that glow. I wanted to do this because I'm going into work today, but I'm also after work going to my boyfriend's, he's picking me up. So I wanted to do something casual, comfortable. I don't see a ton of people in the office for obvious reasons, so that was sort of the choice. I've got on mom jeans, I've got on this white sleeveless top knitted from 90s Liz Claiborne that I thrifted that I love and this camel colored cardigan that's my mom's. I was going for sort of this look from When Harry Met Sally, and I think I like casually did that. So it actually feels like fall. It is so nice. Also, let me show you this view. I mean, how beautiful is that? The dog's barking, this scene. Now, in terms of vlogging and reading, I don't know how much I will end up vlogging today because I'm we're running around, but I do have a plan to finish Meaty or get pretty far into Meaty um, today, and that is sort of the goal. Meg Ryan Fall. Vibes. So I didn't vlog the rest of that day, Thursday, but as you can see, it was a cold, frosty morning, which was really nice, foggy. And then the moon was really pretty. Here's me just saying, moon, moon, over and over again. And then my boyfriend picked me up and we took a really beautiful drive up to the mountains where he lives. It got colder and colder as we went up and some of the trees were even turning a little bit. It was so, so, so nice. 
And then he had put up this Halloween stuff that I had gotten him, and I was just really excited about it, and it's just so cozy. Anyway, here's tomorrow. Hello. Welcome to Friday. Let me talk about my outfit. I went with sort of a Kathleen Kelly look. So I've got on this turtleneck, this cardigan, same jeans from yesterday, and then these black flocks. I was thinking of this particular picture as inspiration. Now back to reading. What is the plan? I need to do some laundry while I'm up here. So I am going to listen to more of Samantha Irby's Meaty and finish that book. I just remembered I bought this hat fairly recently, a film by Nora Ephron from Super Yaki on sale. Perfect for work. Nor Ephron, Meg Ryan Fall, also very cute. Just pretend I'm wearing it. I finished Meaty by Samantha Irby. This was interesting. Samantha Irby originally published this book in 2013, so it's been, you know, quite a few years, and re released this book um, from a major publisher in 2018. I had heard from people that it was sort of dated, and it definitely is at times. I think that her sense of humor tends to be one that pushes the boundaries even now, but this pushes the boundaries a little bit more and a little more aggressively. But besides that point, it still was funny and relatable and deeply honest. And my favorite thing about this book was her talking about making food, like she does little recipes throughout the book, which I really enjoyed with funny commentary. Specifically, I liked at the end of the book, she talks about making cocktails. Do I think this is a book that Nora Ephron would have enjoyed? I don't know, probably not, just because it is kind of like, you know, she gets into it. Like, it, it can be a little, for lack of a better word, crass. I don't know. I don't find it crass, but I could see someone finding it crass. But in general, I think the sense of humor, the ability to laugh at yourself is something that Nora Ephron did well. Yeah, I'm gonna say sure. I have the reading list here. I would like to finish this book. I'd like this to be the last book that I read for this challenge. I picked this book, if you remember, because I think it's gonna have You've Got mail -y vibe. In terms of the family aspect of You've Got Mail, so that, just this is happening. So that is my plan. I'm probably gonna half pick it up on audiobook, but yeah. It smells like fall. It's so nice. The one thing that I forgot about general fiction, because I tend to read mostly, you know, romance, is general fiction, you genuinely don't know it's gonna happen. You know, you know it's probably gonna be fine, because general fiction tends to not be, like, horribly depressing. It's still not, like, a story predicated on, to an extent, archetypes, tropes, a certain kind of plot. And then a variation on that, which is what you have with genre fiction, but it can also make books feel a bit more boring, even though they're more unpredictable. Does that make any sense? Probably not. Today is the last day of Meg Ryan fall reading vlog. What is today's outfit? Today's outfit is comfortable. I know, you're thinking, her outfits got less and less exciting and complicated as the week went on. Yes, because I got tired. Now I'm feeling a little bit under the weather. So I went with just a really comfy, classic Meg Ryan fall look, kind of a sleepless in Seattle moment. Just a big sweater and some stretchy black pants and some socks that go over my pants, because it is chilly today. It is properly quite chilly. So that is the look. The plan today is to finish the reading list. Very much an interconnected, lots of different people story. And they're connected through this reading list, this mysterious reading list that keeps getting passed around all these different people that has a list of books on it, basically with the title, If You Need Them. The first book that sort of, I think, brings all these characters together is To Kill a Mockingbird, which I have like mixed feelings about it being To Kill a Mockingbird for all of the reasons I think that people have come to criticize that book and its place in the American lexicon of literature or the, you know, English speaking lexicon of literature. 
So, I don't know. I don't particularly, like, love that it's such a kill a mockingbird, but I guess I kind of get it at the same time. Overall, this book is, is sweet. Let's see if this fixes my allergies. It's tequila. I think a Meg Ryan character would do that. I already feel less yucky. So one of the books on this list that everybody's finding is Pride and Prejudice, and they're so mean about Pride and Prejudice. Man, oh man, they do not like Pride and Prejudice, which I don't know. I wish that was unpacked better. Um, one of the characters, one of the main characters, she describes it as like fluff or like a guilty pleasure read, and it just bums me out. I wish that uh, the writer had done a better job of like not promoting stereotypes about women's fiction, even Pride and Prejudice. It's also very windy right now. I finished the reading list, which means I have read everything I wanted to read for this video. Let's start with the pros. This book is definitely a celebration of community, connection, family, and specifically the way libraries foster that environment. It's truly a love letter to libraries, which I did really love. And I enjoyed the relationship between the two main characters, one being an old man who's a widower, and the other being a teenage girl who works at the library. Neither one of them are readers at the start of this book, and it's also really a celebration of getting into reading, which I really, really enjoyed. It felt very unpretentious in that way. I also really enjoyed the way books were used as a connection point for the characters to connect their home life, personal lives to these stories. I enjoyed that interplay. I thought it was really fun to read. Now, what did I not like about this book? Besides like the nitpicky things, like the fact I didn't always like the books that were chosen and talked about, I had a problem with the ending of this book. I'm going to put a huge content warning in the description for what happens towards the end of the book and really is the catalyst for a lot of these characters to finish their journeys and or start their journeys. I thought it was needlessly traumatic and needlessly dark. It just felt like more of a plot device to make these characters finish their journeys. I wish I had read content warnings before going in because I was not surprised but also quite shocked about what happened and it's something that I don't particularly like reading about. So there you go, all in all, I did think it was very sweet. Do I think Kathleen Kelly would like this book? Yes, for the community part. Little Shop Around the Corner, very much a community store. It makes total sense that she would like this book. I thought we'd end this Meg Ryan fall video enjoying the late afternoon fallish weather that's occurring here. This video was so much fun. It felt like it was three weeks instead of only a week. I enjoyed sort of channeling this persona while also still being my myself, if that makes sense. I know this video wasn't particularly aesthetic, but you know, I don't try to make my life that aesthetic. I try to just make it the way that makes me feel good, which isn't always aesthetic. So there you go. Anyway, please let me know what you thought of this video. <sighs> Alright, have a lovely day.